Now, here with me on this board, guess what are they? 10 things that you should never struggle to explain to anybody. <laughs> By the way, have you ever been got on gotten yourself in a situation whereby you feel like the community owe or something like you owe something for the community, like they want you to explain something about them, and then you feel like, why don't you guys mind your own businesses? These are my personal things. I don't have to explain to anything to you. There's a reality. Ever gotten yourself in such a situation? By the way, you have never been wrong. And today I'm going to show you 10 things of them. You don't have to struggle to explain to them. That's all by you and they're unique to anyone. Before I even tell you anything, don't pick on my board. Come on, before I tell you anything, you know, if you're watching me for the first time, my name is Good Joseph. And probably if you have not subscribed, hit that magical button, written subscribe. And you know the importance of that? I usually post a video each and every day. So you never miss any of good of my videos. And if you've been watching my videos, you know, come on, we like you liking the video. Come on, that's like... You know, do the thing and also subscribe. Let's get to the business, okay? Now, the first number one, the first thing that you do not owe anybody explanation is called life's choices. You see, <clears throat> some of the decisions we make in life... It, it, let me tell you one secret. You see, each and every one has his own or his or her own life decisions. And we are compelled either by our past, either by our current situations. So the kind of the life choices that we make may not really necessarily reflect that what the society expects us to make. For example, you might some find somebody who don't want to get married. They don't want to get married. Why? Because to them, maybe they have ever faced something. Maybe they grew up in a, in a parenthood whereby there was a lot of sort of a trauma or something or so. They just want to, don't want to get themselves into that thing. You do not know nobody's past. So don't try to compel them and let them understand or make you understand why they are making that life's decisions. You get what I'm saying? Unless you're looking for a help, life's choices, you do not really have to explain to people provided you're not harming anybody provided you're doing something that is say hey guess what you it's productive to the community and also to you there's a reality so life choices you don't have to explain to anybody and we all make life choices based on our situation number two there's something called the financial decisions provided you're making a sound financial decision you don't really have to explain to anybody let's say for example i've decided to never build myself some rentals you know, I just want to invest in soft assets, likes of the bills, bonds, treasury, whatever, all those kind of things. I don't want to need, need these nitty gritties of building the rentals and what have you. I just want to invest. By the way, I'm saying this because I met a lady who liquidated her property close to a oh, huge amount of money. The way she was investing, wow, that was quite impressive. And she was doing her own things. And she was actually doing things in a very different way, especially from that family that she comes from, okay? So the thing is this, we adjust ourselves on the financial journey based on what is appropriate and rightful for us. So the point is this, when you're making financial decisions, provided you've actually done all the integrities, you've engaged um, a financial advisor and all those kind of things, you've actually gathered all and enough information before making that decision, then at that particular point, then you do not owe anybody explanation, all right? And I usually wonder, when you're out there making money, nobody cares about you, but when you make it now, everybody is on your knee, I mean, on your face and trying to tell you, how did you utilize that money? You know, you see, in our family, we do this. We don't do that. It's like they make you feel like, like, they make you feel like you have to explain everything that you're doing as far as the finances are concerned. Remember one thing, as much as we come from the same families in one way or the other, we have something called independent assortment. Like we have unique things, you know, I've borrowed that name from the biology in terms of genetics and what have you. See, even if you get uh, twins, whether they're identical, they all have what we call the independent assortment. Then is that uniqueness you know in with individuals as far as their life is concerned so the same case applies in our life so the financial decision that we make is unique to our own life and there is a reason why we are doing exactly that we got the that one the that one is what we call your love status this one is quite popular in Africa. Have you ever met some family or some guys there? Maybe you meet your aunt, you meet your uncle, maybe maybe they say your old friends or your neighbors or something of sort. And maybe if your lady they're asking you when are you gonna get married, you know, you're you, you know, they, they kind of make you feel like you are at 70. And you're not, you're barely getting by. You're not even at 25. You're not even you, you you're not even be, you're below even that. You've not even gotten yourself in order. Maybe say you come from a very poor background, and these guys are telling you, you go ahead, you are a man, go ahead and get married. You're barely even living by yourself. You're not even financially stable. And this guy that's trying to squeeze that aspect of you getting married at that particular point. And you know one thing, it will be messy. Because you're getting married, of course, it means more responsibilities of love. And again, another thing, must you even explain to people whether you're married or not married, your relationship, you're single, you're whatever. Who... 
you owe nobody explanation as far as that is concerned. It's very personal. I mean, it's a, it's a thing that you don't have to explain to anybody, you know, unless maybe you just want to share. And then we have this kind of weird thing, especially in Africa, to be specific in Kenya. I don't know whether you guys, you have it in your countries, whereby you meet somebody on the way, and the very first question they ask you, how is your family? And then you're like, okay, which family are you referring to? By default, they always refer to the family that you created. Like, how's your wife? How's your kids? How's your anything? And then you feel like, why would you even ask about that? Did you even ask me, like, hey, where, where is the job nowadays? Like, okay, where do you get the gig? Uh, oh, how, how is life, by the way? You know, how is the economy from your end? Oh, and how, by the way, are you trying to, you know, guard yourself? You know, ask those substantive questions before you spill over to the things like my love life and all those kind of things. And then maybe you meet your old classmate that the thing that they're asking you, they dwell most on, hey, did you get married? Did you have the kids? It's like having kids and getting married is like an ultimate goal in African society. I don't know. Yeah, it's an important thing, and I'm not saying it's bad, but the point is this. I mean, yeah, it's 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 good on me, not good on you. Me getting or not getting married has nothing to do with you. If I am, then it has nothing to do with you. All right? That, that's the reality. And, and those kind of questions are kind of annoying or something of sorts, okay? So you better be cautious and careful when you're answering them. I'm not calling you guys to be rude. I'm not calling you guys to be, like, arrogant when you're responding to these questions. Just understand them and try to divert that energy, you know? Whenever you ask me such questions, I always divert that energy. You know, I divert it. I just respond in a cool way that never ever in your life you'll ever ask me that question again, okay? Now, the point is this. You need wisdom in this world that you're living in because if you engage anything in any way <clears throat> hey you're gonna rub shoulders with a lot of people let's get into another one the fourth one is about the career pal this one probably this message is going to the parents you see uh for example you might actually be into university for example what i studied in university as my first degree is not what i exercise there's a reality i'm on a totally different area by the way you guys you can be shocked what i studied in university has never given me food has never placed food on my table nothing nothing like that so if you are to, I was to borrow the idea of my parents, you stick to what you studied, stick to what you graduated for, stick to that. Probably right now I'll be here begging or probably, I mean, I will be just, I don't know where. The point is, when it comes to career decision, we make a career based on what we know it's our abilities. You might find somebody saying, hey, I want to do DJing. I find somebody, hey, I want to go into the music. But the parents say, hey, you have to go to the doctorate. You have to go to the engineering. You have to go to the architecture. These traditional careers and courses and what have you. So when it comes to the career choices, this one, I would say, you know, I, and I really wish if we had a system whereby we are making, uh, you know, career choices based on our abilities. I wish they were not only considering the cluster point when you're joining the university. They also play along something like, hey, what are your passions, your abilities, your talents and such, so that at least they can as well guide you when you're choosing a career. You might find somebody who is very good at music you know, and you have good grades. And I don't know who said that if you have an A, you know, that, that, that an A is ought to do medicine or something of sort. Maybe you need that A in music. Maybe you need that A in something different. Maybe you need that A in something like art, you know. You get what I'm saying, you know? For example, you might, I remember back when we were in campus, I do not know whether that thing is it. Campus, basically, I mean like university. When we were there, we, we, you could meet somebody who had an A in a class and, uh, and, and and then you realize they are doing English literature and you are shocked. You are like, why would you take your A to English literature? I mean, who said English literature can't pay you? Who said that certain courses can't pay you? Who said that if you go ahead and do botany or botanical or whatever and beauty, events, planning, uh, tourism and such, who told you that an A can't go there? Uh, you get what I'm saying? The point is this, when you're making a career decision, should be solely based on what you know is your abilities, your passion and all those kind of things, okay? So that when you have the talent and then you added an ability on top of that, yo, and you actually consistency, you can actually achieve a lot of things in life. Let's go to the point number five, your opinion. Come on, this one does not even need any explanation. Everyone has opinionated. Or, or rather, should I say everyone is opinionated? That's the reality. See, you be smart, picking opinions that are okay, others are not okay. The point is this, your opinion, you, that's the entitlement of your opinion. But of course, the opinion that you make should not harm anybody. That's the reality. Let's live in a harmonious world where we respect everybody. So the point is this, your opinion should be your opinion, all right? But now we are living in an era whereby... Let me not get there. Dietary choices. Dietary choices, we may find somebody who is a vegan. Yeah, somebody has decided to be a vegan. Others are meat eaters. So the point is this. You are a vegan. You just 
be comfortable with your vegan life wherever. Don't try to force it down our throats. If you're a meat eater again, don't go to like mock those vegans and try to show them like they're not smart or something of sort. Just respect anybody. Whoever or whatever they are doing in terms of vegans or whatever, that, that, that is their lifestyle. And again, that, and you do not need to owe anybody. For example, if you meet me somewhere and you tell me, hey, let's go take some pork. Personally, I don't take pork. And, and then uh, I, I tell you, you know, see me telling you I don't take pork. That's enough. You don't need explanation. Why? Oh, are you religious? Why what? Why do you take this? Then you give me some millions of... I don't need that. I've just told you. See, maturity is when I tell you I don't eat pork. Done. Oh, oh okay. Oh, sure. I respect that. No problem then. Uh, do, 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 no, I don't. For example, I don't take pork. I don't take alcohol. Like, hey, I don't take alcohol. Don't try to explain. Like, okay, if you don't take alcohol, you're into ladies' light. You're into... Simple. I don't do that. Not, just because I don't do that does not mean by default I do the other thing. Enough. See, maturity is when I tell you I don't do this. For example, <clears throat> when you ask me a question, I tell you, well, mm, I don't feel comfortable sharing that. Or, or I just tell you, <clears throat> that's a top secret. Or I tell you, uh, you know, that's classified. See, as a mature person, you'd be like, oh, wow, I respect that. I respect that. Now, don't try to press it or yourself. No, come on, come on, come on. The other thing is that your past, you don't need to explain to anybody your past. You know, there are people who really press you. You see, okay, fine. If you, if this individual is asking you and you're about to get married or you have something serious that the past can actually affect what you're about to do, at that particular point, you ought to or you must explain your past. For example, say you're getting to a business partnership. And, and, and then there's some of the things that you usually do. I have some sort of a <clears throat> information about you, about the businesses, and they are contributed to you failing the business. So you have to explain to me so that I understand you. Or maybe say, I've never heard anything about you. I need to know your past as far as the business is concerned. Have you ever been to business? Have you ever invested before? Okay. How did you go about? Or what are the, like, you know, what, what, what are the proofs that indeed you had a business before? And, and how was it performing? And how is it now? What did you gain? What is your perception about businesses? I need to know that past. Because if you get into a partnership with you, maybe you're a spender. Maybe you do not know how to grow a business or something. So that, that, that past is quite essential. For example, say we won't get married. I need to know your past. Where have you been? Have you ever been married before? Or how is your life? And, 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 and do you have some guys who are on the back of your head or something of sort? Like how exactly like that? Is, do you have kids or something? Like I need to know. See, that's some of the past can affect you. At that particular point, you know you are getting to a serious thing, you can share your past. But you just meet a random stranger out there, or maybe let's say they're your friends, but they owe you nothing as far as the past is concerned. But they are on your neck asking you every time, like, how is your past and all those kind of things. Does not even benefit them, okay? It's just in a respective way, just say, I'm not comfortable sharing that information. Or just, you see, for me, I'm very latent truth. I just tell you the way it is. No, I can't share that with you. Simple. Uh, and then they like you, uh, all I say just, I don't think you qualify to know my past. I, I don't think you, it doesn't even help you in any one way or the other. Okay? Th th that's it. You just let them know. I don't want to do that. Okay? We've got the next one. The next one is about parenting style. See, nowadays people are bringing up their kids the way they want. And for yourself from where you sit, let's say you're a Christian, or say you're a Muslim, or you're a Jew, there is a way you bring up your kids. You know, maybe if they're Muslim, they go to Madrasa. If they're Christian, they go to Sunday school. If they're Jews, that is where they go. See, if maybe you live in a midst of other communities, you don't have to explain to them. You don't have to explain to people why my kids as a Muslim, they have to go to Madrasa. You don't have to. Th that's what we do. That's my religion. That's what we believe in. That's how I bring up my kids. If I'm a Christian, I take my kids to Sunday school. I don't have to owe you. If you're a Muslim, I don't have to explain to you why I do this. If I'm a Christian, why would you force it down my throat that your madrasa is better than mine? Or why would you would I force you that my Sunday school is better than mine? You see, the point is this. This issue of us stretching back and forth is what is bringing, you know, breaking this cohesion in the society, these social fabrics, people where even they're even fighting. Those are reality. So the point is, is how you decide to bring up your kids has nothing to do with my business. If I feel comf I'm not comfortable with my kids being with your kids based on how you bring them, I vacate or I, I don't know. The point is this, everyone has their choice, you know, personal decisions whenever they want to do. That's a reality, right? I know this one can open a very big discussion. I know I'm just touching superficially, but it's a quite of a heavy discussion here, especially when it comes to parenting. Because there's something that you can tell people, hey, this is the best way to bring kids, and they tell you no, especially in this era that you're living in. I don't want to delve much into that. You guys, you know what I'm talking about. The last one, or rather, and the second last one is a personal boundaries. 
You see, you need to have boundaries. And sometimes if you find somebody, you're telling them that you're crossing my boundaries. At that particular point, they ask you like, what are they and all those kind of, Fine, you can explain to them. But if you find like there's still nuisance on you or something of sort, you can just, you don't have to owe them explanations. For example, I was giving an example of mine. I don't take alcohol. So if when you tell me, hey, let's go there, let's do this, just take a little bit of alcohol, I tell you, no, I do not take alcohol. And then you're trying to make it look like as if, hey, if I don't, then I won't be your friend. So be it. You get what I'm saying? By the way, personally, I've lost a lot of friends on the basis of alcohol. You know, they say that big deals and good deals are made in, 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 in clubs and all those kind of things. Never buy that nonsense. The last one is about self-care and personal decision. Personal decision that you make, by no, that one may mirror by your opinion and uh, your career paths and all those kind of things. But the fact is how you self-care yourself and personal decisions. See, you can find somebody, you know, self-care. There's something the routine that they do. They do it because they have a thing that is going on. You might find somebody who applies like a lot of oil. I know this point that we had an example, applies a lot of oil on the skin. Maybe they have a sort of a dry skin or something. See, come on. See, when you are civilized, when you are smart, learn to see things. Learn to see things. For example, there is a wonderful guy whom I usually watch their videos called Ayamaro. The guy puts on the shades because he has a, you know, let me just call it a small problem with the eye or something of sort. You find uh, people ask, why do you have shades even at night or those kind of things? Come on. The guy does not even know you something. Forget about that. Watch their vlogs. Watch those beautiful videos that he puts and posts out there. That's a reality. That's an example. He's a great guy. You can go check him out. So the point is this. You don't know oh, anybody. That's their self-care. That is their lifestyle. That is how their personal decision. You, some people make decisions based on their life the way it is. How they actually perceive life. There's somebody who can tell you, I can't eat this because if I do this, I'm going to get myself. I do have some ulcers problems. I have to self-care myself. I can't take this. I can't stop pressing things into people. Stop the need to explain to people some of the things So because they will never understand. Can you imagine this? How many, how many times will you explain yourself? Let's say maybe you had a very bad experience with marriage and you don't want to get married and then let's say you migrate to a different place. And at every time you migrate, you have to explain to people what happens. How many times will you even share that story? You get that? Thing. So it reaches to a point where but you don't even need to share with anybody. Just shut up. Let them say whatever they're going to say because they never understand you. And the moment you share, they're like, you ah, didn't know. Actually, oh, we are sorry for that. So how many times will you even share that? I mean, unless you stand somewhere with a very big microphone and you share to the rest of the world. So that by the time you find guys, I migrate to your place now, you just know that's me. So don't ask me some of this. You can't do that. You get what I'm saying? So it is good to make sure to understand some of the things that you do not have. You do not have master to share people anyway guys guess what if you want to pick my number from the description of this specific video you are free to do so shoot me a call let's go ahead and have a discussion about investment for now it's a goodbye